On Foodie Friday here on the Alive and Social Network, let's spotlight some of the James Beard Award finalists that are going down because the announcement just came down this last week. The 2015 James Beard Awards, the big foodie award in the food world. Uh, it'll happen in Chicago on Monday, May 4th. And so we just want to throw a quick spotlight on some of these great great uh, talent uh, that are here in the area and some of the great uh, restaurants that are being recognized, uh, at least with these nominations. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, Gavin Kaysen, who's back in town now at uh, at Spoon and Table. Spoon and Stable. Uh, did I, what did I say? Table. Did I, uh, did I did say table, tables. didn't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have tables. And they have chairs, too. It's so nice. You don't have to stand <laughs> on <laughs> Or sit on the floor. Spoon and Stable. Thanks. Uh, and, and by the way, that... Location where they are used to be a stable, wasn't it? I think that's why. I, oh, I think I the building was a stable wow. uh, oh, uh, no in that kidding. in that part of the uh, Twin Cities. There, Spoon and Stable, best uh, one of the nominees for uh, the James Beard Awards, best new restaurant category. I mean, just nationally, best new restaurant. Uh, two names in the outstanding baker category: uh, Stephen Horton from Rustica Bakery and John Krause from Patisserie Forty Six. I found this a little surprising given all the great bartenders, the chefs, and the pastry chefs that are uh, uh, in the area here. That uh, Now, this is on a national level here, but we didn't have a single nominee in any of those you know, national categories. Uh, the, the bar program one really kind of surprised me because yeah. we've got a lot, of good, a lot of good bar scene happening here. Uh, outstanding Restaurant, La Belle Vie is on that list. Outstanding Restaurant Tour Kim Bartman's on the list. Oh, I mean, a yeah. long list of folks from all across the nation here. This is the national categories now. Kim from uh, Barbette and Brian Lake Bull, Red Stag, and uh, right around the corner here from the Alive and Social Network, Pat's Tap is right around yeah. the corner here. And and uh, Outstanding Service, uh, Restaurant Alma is a nominee, so a real good thing there. Uh, from the Outstanding Wine, Beer, or Spirits Professional category, Eric Seed from House Alpens, which is located here in the area. Eric's got a cool uh, company that uh, brings in a lot of just different offbeat liqueurs and aperitifs and other things like that. And, uh, and he just reaches out in that way uh, as a professional into the, into the world. He'll be a guest on an upcoming Foodie Friday. Uh, I pinged him and, and uh, congratulated him and... And he said, yeah, I'm in. Count me in. Yeah, so I'm we'll in. spend some time with him. And then we get into the, uh, the chef categories for the different regions. Uh, and I'll wrap it up real quick because uh, the best chef Midwest region category, there were 20 uh, either chefs or chef groupings. And by chef groupings, you'll know what I, when, I, when I mentioned Travail because Mike Brown, Bob Gherkin, and James Winberg are a chef group there. But out of the 20 uh, Midwest uh, chef nominees, uh, chefs or chef groups in the area here had seven. We had seven nominations out of Sweet. twenty. Yeah, wow. I mean, think about that for a second, because that well. includes towns like the Midwest, includes towns like Milwaukee, Madison, St. Louis, Kansas City, and so props to uh, Paul Berglund from the Bachelor Farmer, Mike Brown, Bob, and James from uh, Travail, Jim Christensen from Heyday, Doug Flicker from Piccolo. Turn the page here. Michelle Geyer from Salty Tart, Russell Klein at Meritage and Lenny Russo from Heartland Restaurant and Farm Direct Market in St. Paul. So some props to all of those talent here in the area. A round of applause for those. And uh, again, the James Beard Awards. We've had some beard winners here in the area, some big-time beard winners over the years, and so we'll hope to see a few more trophies make their way here to the the St. Paul, Minneapolis area. Vic, give us a little insight in in the video production world uh, I want to talk about the uh, the Gangsterland movie that you put together in 2011, but I want you to also give us a little insight with foodie memories and food memories. I mean, when did this, when did that narrative uh, of of Bick Smith, just human, yeah. happen? I mean, it, you, like you mentioned, uh, family from the South, right? Uh, moving around the country or in different parts of the country. Uh, was there sort of a southern spin on uh, on your you know first love of food or anything like that? Yeah, my, my mother was a great cook, uh, and she took the southern cooking up to Vermont, and we had a bed and breakfast. It was an inn up there. It was kind of like the Newhart family. <laughs> <laughs> Very odd. And she would cook these amazingly thin hot cakes or pancakes, as we call them. But she called them hot cakes with the Vermont maple syrup and feed those to the guests. And and she made great food. It was wonderful. The, the joy of cooking, I still have 
Um, I lost my mother in the 90s, and I have two copies of The Joy of Cooking, the really old one that's torn up, pages missing, greasy. the binders. Yeah. Greasy. Yeah. It's, it's mm. notes and written all over it, little things. In the margins or yeah. what have you. And yeah. then I have a, a newer version, too. And I still go to those and still check in and, and kind of look at some recipes on occasion with that. So it's... Um, that kind of takes me back. And the one other thing that my mother and father both, um, when they checked in with me at about 12 or 13, they said, do you want to try some coffee? And I said, yeah. They said, all right, have a little sugar in your coffee. But when you grow up, I want you to drink your coffee black. I said, why, Mom? So you're not anybody, you're not any trouble when you go to visit people. You can just have the coffee black. And that was the, and that was all about courtesy back then. So I, like I grew it. to love coffee growing up, and uh, have always loved it. My wife doesn't drink coffee, but I, I think it's the greatest thing around. So it just, it, it was only a matter of time, I suppose, before we got a coffee company going. When, when you got that rocking, yeah, with yeah. Kingster Land Coffee. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the movie, uh, 2011. Uh, uh, what was the genesis behind that? You mentioned the Wabasha Street case, yep. but making a movie is a bigger endeavor than learning about St. Paul gangsters and diving in on that level. So, you know, what really was the beginning of the, the idea of, okay, let's do a movie? Well, we had, I think that between Cynthia and I, we had gathered enough information in our heads to think, let's put this, let's get this on film. And so we started looking at grant money, we started looking at what actors we could bring in to play these parts of people like John Dillinger and Alvin Karpus and Fred and Doc Barker and the, some of the girlfriends. And so we just started gathering people and saying, and this is said way too often to Twin Cities actors, and I'm sorry, people, but this is what we said. Can you do a movie for free? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Twin Cities actors hear this so much, and I have so much respect for them because they do so many things for free, Just some, not just necessarily hoping that it will lead to something greater, but they just do it out of the kindness yeah. of their hearts. So uh, we got this movie going and uh, wrote the script, made sure it was all historically accurate, and then started shooting it in 2010. I have a, a family member on Cynthia's side down in Hampton, Minnesota, who has all the old cars. Uh, Brian, you had mentioned the 34 Ford and one of the uh, uh, coffee bags. He had all the Fords, the 32 Ford, the 31 Chevrolet, all of these. We went down to his farm, and we just started doing scenes with cars. And then we found a place in Hastings that has a fellow who collects buildings. Some people collect matchbox cars. This guy collects buildings. <laughs> Actual That's buildings. 160 acres. He's got, and he brings in buildings from all over the state. So he transports them. He transports and them and puts them. them back together, puts them in on foundation. They're wow. all historic, old gas stations. Perfect. Old, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's like, it's like one big movie set. set. Sure. Even a replica of the old Hastings Spiral Bridge, the old wooden spiral bridge oh, for horses, yeah. way, way back that was torn down. He's built a replica of it. Wow. So we shot on his place we shot around st paul of course st paul has kept so much of its history around we were able to do uh, a lot of scenes there in the wabasha street caves and so we put this film together shot a couple of mini documentaries to go with it some extras and then released it in 2011 and uh that that was great we just where can we time. see this where it, it plays occasionally on tpt on the minnesota channel we also sell it and we sell through our, our website, gangsterlandmovie.com. Okay. And I'm so gonna to, you, I'm going to have to get that. Yeah. And it's and it, you can buy it at uh, the Minnesota Historical Society and Love for Minnesota Stores and such. So Fun. We, the yeah. thing that's so disappointing about gangster movies and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the Public Enemy movie with Johnny Depp. Right. I thought he played a fantastic part, but the script was awful. And so historically inaccurate yeah. that if you read the book before that it was all based on, which was uh, a, a book by Brian Burrow, I read that novel, and that took a lot of liberties with the history. Did you ever read Johnny Depp? No. 
fabulous. Okay. It's a novel based on John Dillinger's life, based around historical fact, based around novel story. That's fabulous. It's oh, on. You can get it on uh, iBook. Okay, there you go. Fabulous I book. I Johnny Death. Check that out. Johnny Death. Really fabulous book. Uh, so in the Wabasha Caves, I've I know the Wabasha Caves just because there has the there's a trail of terror that's like Cave of Terror or something like that, and I was super into that when I was f- in middle school and got dragged to any kind of spooky thing that there was. But did you experience any paranormal, ghosty apparitions in the caves at all? Or? There are ghost stories from those caves because it is said that three gangsters got shot to death in one of the uh, no rooms in a portion of one of the caves and that their spirits are still there. They enjoy all the swing music that's played there. <laughs> Heaven forbid that you'd go around whistling a modern tune because then they start messing with you. <gasps> I've, I've worked there off and on for 15 years, and so you, I, I have experienced things. I've bartended there and leaving at 2 in the morning, and I hear chimes going off, and there are no chimes in the place. At all. At all. Um, mm-hmm. I hear two chimes, and I look up, and the clock says 2 o'clock, and I thought, all right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. There's still an active food program there, I know, and bar and everything. It's event centered. They bring in catering. They bring in catering okay, gotcha. over the Twin Cities, and it's a private event facility. Is there a kitchen there? Uh, is there is not. Okay, not anymore. Right. Back with the old when it was originally the Castle Royal, which opened in uh, October of '33. They had uh, Josie Lehman had a kitchen there, and okay. they cooked until 1940. And then in the late '70s, it was the Castle Royale Two. And there was it was white linen dining and disco music back then. <laughs> there you go. And uh, then it's gone through various other incarnations and non-ownership. And then the current folks who bought it, Stephen Donna Brimmer, uh, they bought it in 1991. And gotcha. Kept it going. But it's private events, and then they do swing dancing on Thursday nights, which is open. Nice. Public, which is great. Very nice. Yeah. The uh, Gangsterland Coffee uh, is this is this working its way into different retail locations now? Are you getting into some of the uh, kitchen uh, shops, we're or, trying to. or also the bigger retailers, the Lunds, the Byerleys, and yep, places we like are, that? We're in that process right now. We have just released this. We're selling online, and then we uh, went to the Minnesota Historical Society and Love for Minnesota stores because we've already been working with them. Nice, and we're working into other retail uh, locations. So. We're hoping to get out there. Uh, it, it takes a while to get the name out when you're not plastering ads everywhere. So that's we just want to tell people about it and have them try it, the coffee because we think it's terrific. And where are you sourcing the coffee from, Vic? The, sor- the coffee, the beans themselves are from all over the world. Um, and they are roasted in Buffalo at Custom Roasting. And our roaster, Stephen Olson, has a 60 kilo roasting machine. He says this thing is decades old. And I've watched him roasting this stuff, and there's such care that he puts into it, checking it and everything for just the right tint and everything. So, very impressed with this process. Over nice. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you guys. Well, best of success to you Thank as you, you move this thing forward. That's fun. You know, the coffee and, and food and beverage industry in general, taint easy. People got to eat. People got to drink coffee. People got to eat. People got to drink. That's right. Speaking of eating and drinking, Brian Turner from the legendary (laughs) Loon Cafe. How long have you been at the Loon now, Brian? Uh, 1986 I started. All right. I was there for a couple of years, and then I went out and did their carbon copy of Dixie's in San Diego. I was out there for a year. Then I came back, and... um, Kind of worked around a couple places, and then I took over the court bar on 7th, the old court bar. Right. I was there for about a year and a half, and then one of the guys from the Loon came back, came over there, and uh, Wingnut. Oh, boy. <laughs> and he came over to the court bar, and he said, uh, one, of the, one of the prep guys is quitting. You want your old job back. I walked upstairs in the office and gave my notice, and I've been there ever since. Nice. Good for you. Good for you, indeed. So, when I took over the whole show in 2000, when uh, J.J. left, J.J. left in 2000, and Donnie Hannon and I took it over and kind of ran it together, and then Donnie left, and um, 
you know, I've been running the show ever since. I do. I have a. I have a sous chef that's fabulous. His name is Patricio, and he and I uh, kind of split it up to where you know I do the the buying and you know that kind of all of menu development and that kind of stuff, and then he handles the scheduling and all that kind of because I'm not very good at that. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, let people play into their strong suits, huh? Let I brought you guys some food today. What did you bring? I brought all kinds. I got a couple of. Well, I got a couple of bags of swag here. All right. All Do right. That. One of my one of my favorite recipes of uh, of Brian's. He shared it. Um, is the uh, Captain Crunch French toast oh. that they make for their brunch? I've yeah. had that. Yeah. I've yeah. Had did that. you see Mary Beth Mueller's thing on Facebook? I could so eat that meal right now. <laughs> She's all pissed <laughs> off. It's like you know. Well. We don't have it here all the time. Right on, right I on. I figured today that why should B.T. McElrath have all the fun? All right, get on that microphone a little more there. Uh, why should B.T. McElrath have all that fun when it comes to candy? So I brought you this. Oh, my, your world-famous oh, Brian oh, Turner Brickle. Oh, and my, Cashew yeah. Brittle. Oh, oh my yeah. God, look at that. Heck, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Dennis likes seeing pictures of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I brought... Um, no Saturday morning in anyone's house should ever be complete without scratch made pancakes. Pancake oh, batter, oh, looking yeah. good. Wow. And, Extra and yellow. And then I brought. Hey, just to be clear, uh, uh, Bick brought us all some coffee. Yeah. yeah. At Marcus. Yeah. Marcus <laughs> is uh, Marcus is looking uh, not very good right now. <laughs> Marcus, you brought us a lot of love. Yeah, exactly. And then oh, I brought lot you of love. guys. I brought you guys a recipe, a non goof up recipe for barbecued ribs. Oh, oh thank you. Which oh, I've yeah. had yours yeah. a million yeah, times. Yeah, like at the like at the like at the bartender's the bartender, golf tournament yeah. every year. Why don't we have these ribs at the loon? Yeah. So these are goof proof is what you're goof saying. This proof. recipe is Read goof proof. Read the last paragraph on the second page. All right. Sit in the bathtub naked and enjoy. Turn on, <laughs> turn on shower for easy cleanup. And then also the part a little further up the page okay. about lighting the grill. <laughs> <laughs> to grill them, light some charcoal or your gas grill. Charcoal is the way to go. Being careful not to set the side of the house, deck, or garage on fire. I'm guessing a little <laughs> true story. Thorough recipe. No, yeah, no, no, not for me. All right, all right just checking. Foolproof. Yeah. Full <laughs> Ah, uh, this looks great, man. Thank you. But I brought you. you a quart of the sauce. Oh, it to go with that. With, it ain't the ribs without the sauce. Got to have, have the sauce. sauce. Um, are you comfortable with us uh, sharing this uh, foolproof information Absolutely. for ribs on the Alive and Social Network page and, and elsewhere? Then, and then we got Good. one more thing. Love it. This is today's soup of the day. Oh, look at there. It's a corn and seafood chowder. That's Ooh, a yum. delicious for looking one there. Southern gent. Here would enjoy this. Oh boy, no! It has a light tomato cream base, and it contains scallop shrimp, clams, and crawfish. Is this your recipe then? Yes, this soup recipe. Yeah, 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 nice. Is that a big thing for you, man? Is developing the recipes like you said? You and Patricio split things up. I I do all of most of the menu development, and he, I brought four chilies to the loon. I brought the. and the loon's known for its chili. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pecos the, River Red is yeah, my favorite. That, there's some of that here, too. I brought some of that that has served at Target Field. Um, I developed first, back in the day, they wanted a chicken one. So I did the chicken one. Okay. Which is our, they're about neck and neck. Pecos River Red and chicken's about neck and neck. And then I did the dirty pork stew and the green sauce. Yeah. And then the veggie chili. And then during the slower months in the winter, we do a chili of the month. And we have like a black bean chorizo one that we do that has chocolate and pe- roasted peanuts oh in it. Oh, it's wow. Really good. Yeah. A turkey white bean that's really popular. And then we also, in that seasonal part, we roll out the old Rufus Valdez. Oh, I remember that one. And that's a half beef, half pork, and like yeah. a salsa. Sauce. I remember that chili, yeah. too. Yeah, that's a good one. So, Where do you develop it? I mean, do you... you I got, start yeah, thinking about but, it. But I, do you have another kitchen uh, downstairs? Yeah, or, yeah or, we have yeah. a complete full-size prep kitchen in the basement, sure. not just a dish out upstairs. Yeah, okay. So, you know, that somebody will come to me and say, we need a new 
you know, we want to do the salad and we need a dressing to go with it and, you know, a lot of that. And I have a, a real huge Mexican connection. My, my wife Kay and I are friends with a Mexican family in San Diego. They work for me at the restaurant out there. And when we were out there, we were over there, out there for Christmas and New Year's this year, I learned how to make mole. Oh, the yeah. real, we're not, not the goofy no around, half -ass yeah. mole Maria here. brand in the jar, the sure. jelly jar thing, the real kind. Now, as we always try to demystify the food world on Foodie Friday, we're not going to make any assumptions that everyone knows what a mole is. What's a mole? A mole is a blend of four different kinds of chili, tomatoes, cinnamon sticks, um, do you know what Conejo sugar is? The dark, it's like a, it kind looks a like a giant corn of incense. Okay. It's rock mm. hard. That's okay. in it. Roasted peanuts, chocolate, raisins. And it's, it all gets put together and gets boiled on the stove. And then they separate the liquid from the chilies and the solids. And that gets pureed. And then that literally gets... The sauce gets made, and it gets literally floated and fried in oil. There's Think of it as a moat of oil around this. And as this stuff starts to fry and it turns into it, it gets stirred together. And th this mole is just to die for. It's so good. Now, the oil, what is that doing at that it, point, it's then? It's churning it around and cooking these solids again, but it... Well, like almost compressing all of yeah, those it, flavors it, it, together. It rolls up together, and you just kind of let it fry as it comes up over the edges and turns in. And it's like, it, for lack of a better word, it's like a convectional process. Yeah. yeah. But the end product, and then it gets strained, and then they roast chicken and lay that in this sauce and let it simmer on no, the All right, now we're talking. Or yeah. or the, uh, the complexity of that is just the flavors have just Yeah, the flavors are just unbelievable. There's star anise in it and garlic cloves and dried chipotle peppers. Just a little bit of everything. Yeah, it's it, and, 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 and this family the, the, that we're friends with, there's 19 people in the family. <laughs> So tying on the feed bag at their house. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, of course, when Kay and I were out there, they want us to cook. All I mean, really, and, and really, that's some, that's really flattering to me to, you know, and so, well, what do you want me to make? Well, we want you to make barbecued ribs. We want your <laughs> wife Kay to make guacamole because <laughs> one of the guys, like, he's from Oaxaca, Mexico, and that's how they make it. Then they wanted cream of habanero soup. Oh, yum. And then I made Santa Barbara tri-tip. I don't know if anybody, are you familiar with tri-tip? I love tri-tip. It's the, it's the top pocket off of a, the sirloin, and it's kind of foot-shaped. But it's all lean meat with a fat cap on it. Well, you take red wine and garlic and shaved onions and soy sauce and all this, and you put it in a bucket. And you put a brick on top of it, and you let it sit for two days in the refrigerator. And Santa Barbara tri-tip is never, like, rare. It's served more like medium well, but it literally falls. It just slices. It's just. Oh, so man, I made that, that on, on live fire, you know, log charcoal on their parrilla in the backyard. They've got a pit in their backyard for roasting goats on. <laughs> <laughs> we should all be so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> well, it ain't, it's not, I, well, not I, my thing. Kate didn't like it at all. I'm, I'm thinking of an idea for the backyard of the Alive and Social Network <laughs> Southside <laughs> Studios yeah. now. It's fenced in. Nobody needs to see what's <laughs> happening no back need there. To know. Sounds like a summer party could happen. <laughs> Newly remodeled kitchen right there next to it Sacrificial all. Sacrificial goat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, get some mute. Get some man of war music playing or something. <laughs> Pantera. Or... Oh boy, it sounds like we could use a, a a tutorial with that mole sometime. So we'll we'll think about that. Now, Maybe I, we could get I, a little I, actually, video actually, podcast going. A Foodie Friday oh, video podcast and that have would some be fun really with that. Cool. That'd be fun. I would because yeah. I'd, I'm. I'm toying with the idea eventually sometime. I would like to start selling tutorial DVDs on like eBay. There you go. 
Yeah, how totally. to make stuff. How to make mm-hmm. out stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, think I, I, have a, I have a recipe for a one-pan cake. It's a southern recipe for Heath Bar cake. Oh. Forget about it. I mean, it's, <laughs> my mom, used to, my mom used to call me up and go, I've got a Heath Bar cake in the oven. She wouldn't even get the phone in the crib. <laughs> <laughs> She'd hear the garage door start up. You know? <laughs> but it's this Heath, you know, it's... It, just this fabulous one pan, one bowl cake that's just fabulous. But I would, wow. I've always toyed with the idea of doing something like that. Uh, I think maybe, there may be a market for that. But this mole thing, I mean, it's a very visual, I wouldn't say exactly emotional process, but it's very... Could very, be. The, the floating yeah. and oil thing is really interesting. Mm-hmm. How the... I guess convectional, you would say. How yeah, this, you did, uh, uh, and, and, and it goes to show you. I mean, this many and it years, takes all day. This many years into it, and you go out and spend some time with friends, and you pick up a new technique yourself. Yeah, You're always yeah, picking yeah, up new yeah. stuff along the this way. This family has been nothing but just wonderful. To us, they love. That's great. And when we first, when Kay and I first hooked up before we got married, we I took her out there on vacation. Well, she made the mistake of telling them that Mexican is her favorite food. Oh, well, it's just. one thing after another marcus dorn from darby's favorite food what do you like best oh god i could eat pizza every single day really yeah 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 it's it's one of those staples that when you're hung over cold pizza right out of the (laughs) fridge when you're out for dinner it just i I could eat pizza every day how about you big smith favorite food i don't know i i keep going back to the red meat and i love a, a brisket Oh, yum. Mm. That's that's it for me on the grill. Yeah. Like that. Slice thin against the bias right, there. Right, yeah. Right, right. On a good bun then or just uh no. just on the plate? No, just plain. I'm watching my starch. Alrighty. <laughs> I'm going all protein. And for Brian Turner here, it sounds like Heath Bar cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like a whole bunch of stuff. I like I love to barbecue and I love to entertain and that kind of stuff. So it, barbecue i love great chinese food oh, yeah. but you got to look in this town you do yeah, yeah. Yep. you do get away from the you know the food court stuff in Rain- the skyways that's not chinese rainbow food. chinese restaurant south minneapolis that's one of my favorites or the tea Shang house Cheng. Yep. tea house Shang on Cheng washington in Town. Yeah. yeah and tea house in in uh, plymouth yep mm-hmm. and in plymouth the same people Sichuan. yeah that's authentic. a pretty good place too uh Lid, you, you, before we close out the show today, I want to do a little round robin on a topic that you wanted to bring the Foodie Friday today about. Uh, we've got the craft beer world, which is big here in our state, but also uh, the craft Small spirit batch whiskey world. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Bring it on, Lydia. So, with that kind of coming to a head and gaining popularity, do you guys, do you, Brian and Marcus, have any, any, strong compulsion to introduce those kinds of craft spirits you know we have the north man i think it is um there's the solve gin um there's all these other different small batch distilleries popping up all over the place um has that been brought to your attention at all or do you have any craft cocktails that you've been working on or has that affected your business at all not uh i think the craft spirits is still in its yeah infinite yeah, yeah exactly it's uh the craft beer trust me it's uh you could put a hundred and ten beers on tap and still not have everything that everybody wants right. um as far as the craft spirits go I think there's little niches in the market at certain places where people go there looking for something like that has it been you know mainstream yet I don't think so it I think it'll happen. Um, a lot of places, you know, I think the fancier places you will find stuff like that before you will at necessarily a Loon Cafe or Darby's. at Darby's. Definitely. Um, we try to just more or less cater to what our customers do want. And as of yet, the customers just haven't been asking for that stuff, but they sure have been asking for the craft beer. It's mm-hmm. unbelievable how uh, you just can't keep up with all the local places that pop up and brew beer, and everybody wants you to carry their stuff, and you can only carry so much. Well, and you're a stone's throw away from Fulton Brewery. That's oh, yeah. right there. Yeah. You keep in mind, too, these distilleries, these craft distilleries are still pretty young, and it yeah. takes yeah. a few years of aging to get your product, at least in cases of some whiskeys and bourbons, mm-hmm. bourbons, yeah. 
girls especially. But oh yeah, yeah. So w- w- a couple more years, watch out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What yeah, some of those you, some of those you can get a little fresher. Uh, yeah. uh, the vodkas, you yeah. know, obviously yeah. you yeah. can turn those around a little quicker. But that's a good point. Yeah. I've read some different barrel techniques are being put in place now to allow you to more or less bring more of the wood out of the barrel and get it into the uh, alcohol and make the whiskey a little faster. It's still a little bit fresher, and you can get a little bit of a woody taste to it. So they have to be very careful about yeah. how they do that quick barrel aging. Yeah. But uh, I think you're onto something there, Bick. In that some years from now. We're going to start seeing some of these uh, some of these tasty whiskeys make their way onto the scene. Definitely, Brian. What about you? Have Have you been introduced to any craft spirits at the Loon Cafe? Um, yeah, there's been there's been some talk. Something that's really popular is like bur- bullet. Oh yeah, bourbon. Bourbons. Yep. They're very popular. They're and, rye. Yeah. You know, um, I don't really handle all that much of the the liquor angle. I mean, because I don't drink. First of all. I mean, there are some fond memories of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, fond, let's start over here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I really believe in that kind of stuff. Yeah. It, like small barrel, you know, bourbon and stuff. Bring it on. I mean, mm-hmm. I, that's the coolest thing ever to me is is somebody that has the foresight and brains to bring up something like that. Like we've seen all. Are, do you have Tel Aviv at Darby's? Oh yeah. Tel Aviv yep. Vodka, that's yep. a local yep. company, and, and uh, I've done work for the guy that started that. Yep. Out of Israel. It's that's a vodka. delicious vodka, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife likes it, and so does my mother-in-law, and it's it's got biblical stuff oh, in yeah. it. Oh, yeah. The bottle itself is very yeah. unique. It's really pretty. Yeah. yeah, the lighted base they give you. Yep. And all that. Yep. It's got <laughs> biblical stuff in it. <laughs> It's we got have, actual bits of Bible in it. So I think. We have toenail clippings from the yeah. from the base of the wall, the it's Great Wailing Wall. Uh, what? So my question is, Lydia, what do you like to eat? Oh, what do I like to eat? Um, like if like if we were to walk into the kitchen and I'll make you anything in the world you want to eat, what's that going to be? I am actually I'm a huge fan of Mexican food. Like your wife, I really like Mexican food, and Ola Arepa, which is just oh, around yeah. the corner here make some really kick-ass Mexican food. I am a big fan. I love the -the hole-in-the-wall Mexican places. Like I was thinking on the way over here when I crossed over 26th Street, whatever happened to Taco Morello's? The little, filthy, hole-in-the-wall, rickety chairs, rickety table, Gone. They expand the place, and then it's out of business. Well, you got Victor's 1959. You yeah. got that little Cuban hole in the wall. That's beautiful. Joint. That's super fun to go to, mm-hmm. and they make incredible food too. So I'm a big Hispanic food fan. Cool. I got to say, from my perspective, this rib recipe, this flawless rib recipe. <laughs> not only am I happy about the end all, where I get to get in the naked. Tub naked. <laughs> I mean, I'm really I'm pleased with that part of the entire recipe narrative. But I I I, uh, I love barbecue. I think uh, I it's about my day. favorite too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My wife and I throw a huge bash at our house every September, and a bunch of people come, and we just grill all day and feed everybody. Nice. People bring dishes to pass, and it's really a fun day. And mm. Nankin wanders punch. Oh <laughs> those, yeah, I remember those, those days. Will be here again soon. Yeah. Yeah. Summer, only, please let, let it be. Barbecue time. I'm ready. I'm ready. Although we like to get that grill going no matter what the season is. That's charcoal for sure. or gas? Uh, charcoal. Yeah. Charcoal. Natural, yeah. natural hardwood charcoal. Although I do miss having, having the quick convenience of I a, have of, one of them for going to the drive-in grill. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Do you go to the drive-in? Does anybody go to the valley? As one, often as we can. Is the, valley, the cottage grove. The valley one, High is the only one left. Val- yeah, valley High, the and then the one, one out at the racetrack in Elko. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's that one there, and then also there's that big five screener in Litchfield, so you can make a, a bit of a. Did they we close went there that? Last year. Oh, that was that was one of those that. deals. Kick here and building will fall down. Oh. <laughs> so, you, so you basically tailgate at the at the drive-in. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. the one out. It's almost to Wisconsin. Yeah. Out past Woodbury. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. You're parking for 850 cars out there. There's 4,000 people out there. Yeah. yeah. Triple, Drinking beer. Triple and feature grilling. night. Yeah, and triple feature. And yeah. we never, my wife and I are too old for the last to stay. <laughs> <laughs> We're not four in the morning. Yeah, we exactly. Home. That's what happens. <laughs> uh, hey, thanks for sharing some thoughts and memories, everybody. Do appreciate it. Uh, Marcus Dorn, it sounds like it'll be a fun 2015. What with. 
the uh, the tots recipe uh, making its way over to Target yeah, Field. Congrats yeah, on yeah. that! Oh, you darn thank right. You all. Thank and, you. Uh, and hard the work continued... pays off. Yeah, it does. And perseverance. Yes, much <laughs> perseverance. Exactly. <laughs> the continued growth in the neighborhood too will add some more some more people in that North Loop area where Darby's is located. So it, it's it's just a fave pub. Uh, for a lot of folks, and so props to you and your partner Mark on you. on making that kind of a destination happen uh, in the North Loop neighborhood. Good on you, my friend. Thank Good you very you. much, BT. Big Smith, where can folks tap into this coffee? Give us a website because I know I, I I don't remember it off the top of my head. My apologies, but That's I okay. know that uh, what I thought was cool was that you packaged some of the coffee there. But uh, as Brian Turner here mentioned, my fellow Brian, he wants to see that movie. Yep. You can buy a Get pack. You can buy a, a a gift pack or what have you of the yep. coffees and the movie. So That's I love right. that. All, all there at gangsterlandmovie dot com. All right, nice. pretty simple, pretty all. straightforward. And that was yeah. a two thousand eleven production for you Correct. guys. Correct. Yeah. Labor of love. Good one there. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Brian Turner, thank you so much, my fellow well, thanks BT. You. Thanks a million for having us. Good to have you here for sharing stories about. We got uh, time for some loon world. facts. All right, <laughs> all right, we got we got one minute for some quick right. so for some quick since loon facts. Since 1993, when I came back to the Loon Cafe, I did some figuring. All right, let me get that out of the way and for you. And in that time. Like Fred Sanford here. These yeah. are the glasses I need to find the glasses I need. In my do, best do, do. guesstimation, we have made, I have made since 1993, 168,000 gallons of this. Oh, my wow. God. <laughs> That's eight swimming pools. Eight, I was about to ask if you knew how many that was. Eight yeah. swimming pools of... Chili. Pecos River Red. Wow. Just the Pecos, Just the Pecos River, River Red. Red. Wow. And the spices to make that, six and a half tons. Wow. Oh, my God. 2,908 number 10 cans of diced green chilies. <laughs> 3,460 50-pound bags of onions. Wow. 170,000 pounds of diced beef. <laughs> oh, my God. 2,500 gallons of beer. <laughs> and 120,000 number 10 cans of tomato products. Wow. wow. Some good facts from the loon. Yeah. And you specifically. Yeah. Nice stuff. You got a little math going on there, too, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's laughs> ser- serious math. Get your brain going call, on call, up, call up your produce guy and go, yeah, I need to order some onions, please. I need 3,460 50-pound bags. Can, get, <laughs> can I get them by Tuesday? <laughs> Thanks for joining us for Foodie Friday on the Alive and Social Network. My name is Brian Turner. And this is Lydia. Thanks so much for listening. Marcus Dorn, thank you. Big Smith, thank you. And again, fellow Brian Turner, thank you very much for joining us here. Thank you. In the studios of the Alive and Social Network. Join us next week.